Hello again. The number of Gauteng medical students studying in Cuba has decreased from 264 to just 25 over the last three years. But now the provincial health department in Gauteng says it will recruit more students to participate in the Cuban medicine study program. South Africa currently experiencing a critical shortage of doctors in the country. So why are we sending students to study overseas? The deputy health minister, Dr. Sbongsen Lomo, joins us now to clarify. Dr. Lomo, uh, good afternoon. Uh, is it still necessary for South Africa to be sending medical students to study in Cuba? Uh, the question is, why would it not be necessary? It is, yes. Why can't they be trained here at home where we've got very good medical facilities? Yeah, historically it's true. Go back to when, why, why, did we do, why, why did we do it in the first place? We had medical schools then. They were not willing or not available to take medical students with the numbers that we wanted. In 1996, President, the late President Nelson Mandela spoke to President Fidel Castro to say there is not enough capacity of our medical schools to take students. We want to improve and increase the number of students who are trained as doctors. Can you assist us? The program has since then started. In 1997, we sent students there. And in 2012, we send even bigger numbers. To date, we have 2,555 students who have been trained in Cuba. One, they come with a different training model than not is what, what is happening from the training that some of us received. These are the students who become doctors and are readily available to go to places that are most rural. None of our doctors, majority of them, are willing to go to those areas that uh, are poor and poverty-stricken and are rural. Number two, they come with a different model of uh, training. The one that is also going to support us on the national health insurance, which is a, a, a primary health care model. Now, the question gets asked now and then by the media, by the DA, the DA is not sending students from uh, Kukule to Kailisha, Inyanga, and in Western Cape. Because, of course, while we make this policy as a national policy, the buy-in must be in provinces. And those students, before we take them to go and work in New Somerset uh, Hospital in Khrutuski, they become the instrument to break the chain of poverty in their families by just bringing a doctor who otherwise is so poor from the rural areas and they come and assist. So we will not step with this problem because of its benefits to our country. The medical schools now are beginning to say we can improve and increase numbers. Well and good, that is, is fine, that is welcome. But okay. when we initiated this program, they were, not, they were not there, they were not available to improve and increase their numbers of the, of the student intake. So how many are going to be recruited now? Uh, in my introduction, I said that there's been a decrease from 2019 uh, uh, from 264 students in Cuba to 25 last year. How many is the government this time around planning to recruit and send over for training in Cuba? I'm going to Cuba has been given a permission by the minister next week. We are looking to a particular model that we learned in Angola, where we may begin to send less and less students to Cuba because inverted commas is expensive to train them in Cuba. Why? Because of the travel cost and, the, and this and that. But we will not want to relinquish the program as is because of its very progressive nature of training students who are geared for primary health care. So we, we are going to Cuba next week to rediscuss a possibility of remodeling what we saw in Angola, where some students go to Cuba, but bigger numbers remain in Angola, in the country, and are trained there in a model that is actually like that in Cuba, trained by Cuban trained doctors, but we already got a pool of 2,500 of our own that 
trained in Cuba. Some of them are specialists. So if we were to start a faculty uh, here in the country, in any of the existing medical schools, to be in line with that primary health care approach, it's not going to be a difficult program. So those are thoughts that are already on the table, and uh, we may not be sending them in big numbers to Cuba, but we will not abandon the Cuban model of training medical students. So it should be good to talk to you after you come back and you're traveling next week to Cuba to find out what would have been the new agreed model going forward. Thank you very much for your time, sir. That's the Deputy Health Minister, Dr. Subongi Seni Romo, who will be traveling to Cuba next week to discuss a new model for training South African medical students in that Caribbean country.